singing, I was thinking about how there's hardly anything that I can do as a minister of Twin Pines Christian Church without help from somebody else. And a big part of that is my staff, Thomas Stewart, our music director, Marcia Sams, our outreach minister, uh, Claire Gardner and Aaron McNamara, who are in the nursery with our children. Susan Carey, our accompanist. Walker Yanarella and JT Butcher, our musicians. And Carol Gifford, who is here this morning. Uh, usually Carol's worshiping in her own church, but Carol's our office and works in our office. Uh, she is the one who puts together this beautiful PowerPoint every Sunday. And since Carol normally goes to church somewhere else, I want to be sure you know who Carol is. So Carol, would you stand for just a moment with your husband Jeff and let everybody just see who you are. <laughs> Carol is here to celebrate with us for our anniversary, but also nobody wanted to leave worship early today to go get the chicken. So Carol's going to go get the chicken for us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we are so glad you could. It's a great, it's a silly reason, but we're so glad you could be here to worship with us and see a little bit of what a great difference what you do during the week makes to us on Sunday. So thank you, Carol, for your gifts. Also, Sherry Newman is still working for us in our finance ministry. Certainly without Sherry, none of us would even be here. She pays all the bills. <laughs> Have I left anybody out? Sarah. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Hall, well, yes, Sarah Hall should be paid for what she does. <laughs> Sarah Hall in the sound booth, absolutely. We thank you, Sarah, for your dedication. And also Nikki Garland, who is our new student associate, just started seminary. And boy, if, there's a reason they call it cemetery <laughs> instead of seminary. One week, the two weeks of seminary, finished her first class, emergency appendectomy <laughs> on Monday night. She was here Sunday. Everything was lovely. Monday emergency appendectomy. So I'm so sad that Nikki can't be here with us to celebrate today, but we will keep her in our prayers, and I'm very grateful for her being a new addition to our staff as she will be leading our children's ministry and also learning uh, how to do some pastoral care and teaming up with me and doing pastoral care here at Twin Pump. So, yes, many gifts, one spirit, all working together. And one of the things that I am most grateful for about my staff is they make me look good. Mm. So thank you. So we continue with the third uh, sermon in this series called Rooted Down and Growing Up, which is our theme for our 30th anniversary. Here is the t-shirt. You can buy this after church today for $20. We do take credit and debit cards. Yes. <laughs> Certainly inspired by the name of our church, Twin Pines Christian Church, which was named for two pine trees in Gary Kidwell's backyard when the church was formed. But I think also very appropriately as I began to listen to a word from God about what our text would be for our 30th anniversary celebration, it also speaks to Jesus' parable of the mustard tree, which occurs in three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So when we began on September 6th, we heard it from Matthew. Last week we heard it from Mark, and this week we're going to hear it from Luke. So join with me in hearing again the parable of the mustard seed, this time according to Luke. Jesus said, therefore, what is the kingdom of God like, and to what should I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in the garden. It grew and became a tree, and the bird and the birds of the air made nest in its branches. The word of God for the people of God. Praise now many of you know that I love Snoopy. Sarah, do we have Snoopy? Yes. So here's Snoopy atop his doghouse with a bird's nest on his belly. And he is thinking to himself, how do things like this happen to me? I am too easygoing. That's why I should have said something as soon as that stupid bird started to build this nest. <laughs> Still laying atop his doghouse with the nest. The next thing you know, there will be... Uh-oh. 
In case you can't see from where you're sitting, the bird's nest now has baby birds in it, cheeping. And Snoopy says, I knew it. <laughs> the birds of the air came to the mustard tree with its outspread branches and found a home. Every time I turn on the news these days, I hear about people who are having to flee their home because of strife and war and terror. Home is one of those things that we all need. And it's one of those things that we all desire for it to be a good place, a safe place. And it's not always a good safe or uh, for everybody. One of the preachers that I follow, Frederick Buechner, said that we tend to think of peace as being the absence of war or conflict. But it's actually quite the opposite. Peace is not the absence of war. It is the presence of safety. The presence of love. The presence of belonging. Home. Home. Two years ago, three years ago, in 2012, Philip Phillips on the American Idol show had a number one hit called Home. And there's a reason that it hit the charts. Not only is Philip a great singer, but it's the lyrics to the song. Hold on to me as we go down this unfamiliar road. Settle down and we'll all be clear. Don't pay no mind to the demons. They'll fill you, fill you with fear. The trouble might drag you down. If you get lost, you can always be found. You know you're not alone. Because I'm going to make this place your home. I think of those Syrian refugees and they are going down an unfamiliar road. And they don't know where their next home is going to be. And they don't know if they're ever going to get back home. And I look around our country and I see how many people are displaced. Homeless. And not just physically homeless, but emotionally homeless. Socially homeless. Economically homeless. Homeless in their career. Homeless in their friendships. Homeless in their identity. In some way, everybody is going down some unfamiliar road in their life just hoping to get home. E.T. What did E.T. say? Phone home. The song that Philip Phillips sang called Home that hit the number one charts hit that Yes, because he's a good singer, but also because home speaks to something that we all want and need at the deepest level of our heart. In Psalm 23, and the Bible speaks to it. My shepherd, you supply my need. It's one of our great hymns of faith. It's a 23rd song in poetic form in a rhyme. And after it talks about... God making a safe place for us and God being with us in those dark places. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You get down to the end of this hymn in our hymnal. The sure provisions of my God attend me all my days. Oh, may your house be my abode and all my work be praised. Here would I find settled rest while others come and go. Go and come. No more a stranger or a guest, but like a child at home. These last three Sundays, we've been watching videos to learn a little bit about the home that Gary and Judy Kidwell opened up to a community that became a house of God. Today we have the third segment of that video. Walker, if you would get our lights. We're going to hear a little bit more of Gary uh, describing what happened at the very beginning. And then you're going to see and hear a little bit of what people here at Twin Pines have experienced as home in this place. 
and then I felt a call uh, to come and be part of this, um, part of creating a community of folks that cared about each other, cared about the world, and cared about people uh, who needed to be touched by the life-giving and, and forgiving power of Jesus Christ. Before you ever walked, you were talking about the open table and the open communion. What I spoke about was being really nervous when Kate asked me to come here with her. You know, Kate had had a history here. She had been here before. I had not. And I was really nervous because uh, I was not baptized. And in the churches that I attended growing up, I mean, in the program, even on the communion table, it was a set, it, there was a message that said communion is for baptized believers. Um, and and I, I was just very nervously, you know, had to explain to Kate before we go to church, before I go to church with you, I, I'm not baptized and I'm going to feel awkward when I have to pass on the communion tray and I, I wanted her to know why I was going to have to do that. And um, Kate was like, that's not a rule here. <laughs> that's, that's not a Twin Pines thing. That's not a Disciples thing. I, just that alone, and that was before I even walked through the door here. Uh, I, you know, if we want to stick with the whole bona fide theme, I, I, I didn't feel like I was going to be excluded just by the inherent nature of that, you know, custom. And, uh, and that alone was very welcoming. And then you walk in the door and you see Walter right there and came up and said hi as if he'd known me for 20 years. Do you have any hope? <laughs> Pardon me. Do you have any help? Pardon me. Do you have any grace? Pardon me. Do you have any faith? Pardon me. Do you have any love? All through our lives, people are secretly asking us for what it is that gives our life such zest, such power, such hope, such tenacity. And you can look back and you can say, but of course. I found it at Twin Pines Christian Church. I think of every single person 
in the nearly 30 years that this church has been in existence that has walked into this place and found a hiding place that has walked into this place and leaned on the everlasting arms. Every single person who has walked in this place when they didn't think they could take another step and found the power to walk one more step by faith. Every single person who has walked into this place and somehow found the miracle that they were meant for more than just survival and that they could thrive. Every single person who's walked into this place and their eyes have been open and their ears have been open and their hearts have been open and they have met the Jesus that they never knew existed. Every single person who has walked in this place and found a friend in Jesus through one of you or through somebody who has been a part of Twin Pines. For that, I give Thanks, and I hope you will too. I would like to briefly pause and thank Melissa Hall for all of her hard work in creating these amazing videos. Where are you? I'm back in. Oh, back in. <laughs> I can hardly speak. I am so touched. Because when I was 16, like Parker Abel, who had a sign that said camp, and like Brooke Abel, who had her sign that said youth group, those places were my home. My home was good. But camp and youth group, that was my home. And all I could think was, God, I want to grow up and be somebody who can show the rest of the world a place like this. A place that is home. And to actually get to do it, to actually be here in this place, at this church, where you come in and you feel these things. I am just overwhelmed with gratitude and joy. Because you see, there's so many churches that don't feel like that. So we got one more Snoopy here. You may not be able to see all this. All you need to know is that Lucy asked him to hold her balloon. And whatever he does, do not let go of it. And so he's got the balloon in his mouth and he falls asleep. And then he yawns. And off goes the balloon. And when he realizes he has lost... Lucy Van Pelt's balloon. He gets his hobo pack, heads out into the dark of the night and says, make one mistake and you pay for it the rest of your life. (laughs) And that is how church is for so many people in the United States and all across the world. And I think that's the exact opposite of what God wants church to be. I think that's the exact opposite of what Jesus had in mind when he talked about the kingdom of God. And so that's why he talks about this tree, this mustard seed that grows into this tree, that the branches are so big that the birds of the air come and find their home. And that song, Thrive, that we sang earlier today and that Walker uh, was playing just at the end of the video there, that was put together by a guy named uh, Mark Hall, who is the lead singer of Casting Crowns, and it came out of his youth group ministry. Because he wanted to teach kids that what church was about was not making sure you don't screw up so you don't get burned. What it was about was finding a place to be at home and to thrive and be fully yourself and to let God's image be released into you so that you'd be like this tree Growing by this water. He based it on Psalm 1. Like a tree thriving 
by the water. And this is what God wants for us. And that's why I think Twin Pines is one of the best churches in America. Not that I want to compare to others. That's not my point. It's not that we're the tallest tree or the biggest church. It's, and it's not that we're the best church because we're like better than everybody else. We, I think Twin Pines is one of the best churches in America because this is a place you can come and be real. This is a place that you can come and mess up and people are going to help you start over. It's a place where you don't have to come and hide. And it's a place where even when everything in your life totally falls apart and you feel like this is the end, the miracle of our faith is that there is always resurrection after a death. And so somehow, some way, we put our lives back together. Mary Oliver has a wonderful poem called Evidence. I encourage you to look it up online. There's great lines in this poem where she says, Still friends. Consider stone that is without threat of gravity and water that is without anxiety and the pine trees that never forget their recipe for renewal. Twin pine trees that never forget their recipe for renewal. This is where we are. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus is saying, is not off in the stratosphere somewhere. If we read the Bible literally, that's what it sounds like. He says, no, the kingdom of heaven is like a tree that is right here on the earth. And it's like this place where everybody comes home, the birds of the air. I invite you at this time to turn your gaze to the back of the room and look at our mustard tree that is on the wall, courtesy of Karen Springate. And also the birds that we have now added this week with the nest and the eggs. The kingdom of heaven is a place where everybody comes home to God. A place to grow and to thrive. A place to celebrate. To start over. A home base. A home base for feeling at home so that you can go out and show others how they can be at home. When you leave worship today, I want you to stop and take a look at the eggs that are in the nest back there. We have, over the last couple of months, been having some church chats. And we've been thinking about where is God calling us into the next 30 years of Twin Pines. And in the nest of our mustard tree are some of the ideas that are were being birthed in our church chats of ways that we can take this amazing place that started 30 years ago and help all of our neighborhood and our community and our world to find home with God. Whether that's here with us or whether it's wherever they are, but we are doing something to help them to find home because they are refugees. Some of the us back there, we want to be a place that's more diverse. We want multi-aged, multi-colored, multi-ethnicity, multi-gendered, multi-spiritual, multi-point of view. We feel like the more different points of view, yes, that makes it hard, but that makes us better. We want to be, we want to help people find out about the acceptance and the warmth in this place. We want to build on the intimacy and the family feel of this place and how we cherish our children. It is no surprise to me that one of the things that is really caught here at Twin Pines is our ministry to the homeless uh, with Rim in the Inn. Do you get it? No wonder. We're all about home here. This is a place we feel at home. This is a place we've come home to God. No wonder we have a heart for the homeless. Not only do we want them to have a place, a roof over their head, but we want them to find home, love, and relationships. That's why we love to go and sit down and eat with them. I think of all the churches in Lexington, we have the biggest number of church people that show up. We always have as many church people as we have homeless people there. One of the ideas is Ready 2.0. Beds here, bunk rooms here, vans to trans transport the guys, showers, and 
And this will be the real testimony. Worship in such a way that the men and their friends want to be here for worship, whether it's on Sunday morning or any other time, and that they feel welcome and accepted and no different from anybody else, but they're just part of us. I can't wait for that. There's so many other ideas. I can't go into them all right now, but you're going to be hearing more about them as we go, and you can see them when you go back. During the prayer time today in just a minute, and at the end of worship today, I invite you to write your name on one of the leaves of that tree. Even if you're just visiting here today, and you've maybe been a part of Twin Pines at one time, but you're not as active now, we want your name on that tree because none of us would be here today without you. Even if you're just visiting, and today might be your only day, you're here today. You're part of us. And we want your name on that tree. So I invite you to write your name on the leaves and to color it. And when you do that, I want you to remember this. Every time we walk out these doors, we have the opportunity to walk with somebody down some unfamiliar road in their life. We have the opportunity to show them how we have learned to ignore the demons and the fear because of the hope and the peace that we found in this place. Every time we walk out those doors, we have the opportunity to find the lost and to bring them home. I invite you into a time of prayer. You may wish to stay in your seat and pray. As we sing the prayer song, you may wish to get up and write your name on a leaf or a light a candle. You may be wanting to make another step in your faith journey to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. If you need, would like to visit with me about that, about making another step in your faith journey, or if you have a special prayer request, I will be at the back of the room. But let us now offer ourselves to God. And give gratitude for the home we found.